Good afternoon. Greetings from Brussels. I'm delighted to see the EU industry days reaching around the globe, especially in an important partner country like Singapore. This even offers a platform for inclusive dialogue on the challenges and opportunities faced by industry today. The world has certainly changed a lot in recent years, and we are currently witnessing first-hand profound transformations underway. This inevitably has an effect on how public institutions conceive their decision-making. We need more innovative governance tools that will enable us to be more resilient in the face of disruptive events. Tools to prevent us dealing with the future only as it becomes the present. This is where the strategic foresight comes in. Part of my job in this area is to ensure that the Commission uses its collective intelligence, expertise and knowledge to explore what the future might hold and adapt the European Union policies as a result. We have very good interinstitutional cooperation through ESPAS, where we communicate and work together across all EU institutions. We have established a group of EU ministers uh, for the future. More and more member states are upping their strategic foresight game, enabling them to use modern anticipatory techniques for the future, such as horizon scanning. At the same time, we see interest in cooperating from other parts of the world. Therefore, I would like to see us collaborating with the foresight community from Singapore as well, to develop a truly global perspective. We also publish an annual strategic foresight report with the first in 2020, zooming in on the importance of resilience. Last year's report focused on the need for open strategic autonomy, how to make sure we have freedom to act and not be limited by dependencies. The report identified key megatrends which will shape the future of the European Union. First, the climate change. Second, digital hyperconnectivity and technological transformation. Third, increased pressure on democracies and values. Fourth, shifts in the global order and demography. From these four megatrends, it is clear we are heading for an age of mutual interdependencies. And yet, we as Europeans are responsible for our own destiny and should be able to forge and shape it. We need to favour strategy over tactics and be prepared for the future. In light of these challenges, the best strategy is to take actions informed by strategic foresight. And it is action that makes strategic foresight really strategic. It must lead to the strategic change of policies. We have already demonstrated uh, that we can change the game. Four and a half years ago, we began forming what I dubbed an Airbus for batteries, the European Battery Alliance. Thanks to the excellent cooperation between the EU institutions, member states and financial institutions, and crucially, with industrial and innovation actors, this effort has produced significant results. Europe is now the number one destination for battery-related investment, at a rate three and a half times higher than in China. Today, we have 127 billion euros invested in the battery sectors and 111 projects in the making covering the whole value chain. It shows you that if you have the right policies, investment is not a problem. Two problems we do face in the battery industry, however, are skills and critical raw materials. With the skills, uh, thanks to the EIT Inno Energy, we founded the European Battery Alliance Academy to be formally launched in a few days' time. Through this initiative, we have already signed a memorandum of understanding to train 150,000 people for Spain, 150,000 people for France and 40,000 people for Hungary. And I believe we will achieve the target of training 800,000 workers by 2025 to meet the needs of uh, the battery industry. We must also adopt a systemic approach in the area of sustainable raw materials. We are set to diversify and work with raw materials sourced from Europe, neighbouring countries and other like-minded partners like Canada and Australia. But we must invest not only in primary raw materials, but also in recycling, 
critical for a secure supply of secondary raw materials. Currently, only 12% of raw materials used in EU industry come from recycling. To boost uh, this number will require the mobilizing of sufficient funding, including for research. Moreover, we need to put the concept of competitive sustainability into full operation. In the case of batteries, this means that the newly manufactured batteries would have a digital passport with information containing where and how the raw materials were mined, where the social and environmental standards have been respected, what the carbon footprint is, and how we would reuse and recycle them. We can use these lessons for all strategic future-oriented industries. The European Chips Act adopted uh, by the European Commission, which aims to put Europe in a position to be responsible for 20% of global chip production, is a concrete example of how strategic foresight is shaping our institution's priority setting. At the same time, we need to improve permitting procedures for infrastructure and new industry while ensuring compliance with the highest environmental standards laid down in the EU legislation. This is the old problem of transforming NIMBY, not in my backyard, into PIMBY, please, in my backyard. We are looking into this problem with the experts in the Fit for Future platform to make this process smoother and less burdensome while retaining full respect for EU principles, including the high social and environmental standards. Industry will play a crucial role in all these efforts moving forward. And I will finish by inviting you to flag what you see on the horizon. In other words, early signs of potentially important developments, including dependencies. It is our collective intelligence that will help us adapt our policies and become not only green and digital, but also resilient. Thank you.